I don't see a technology as impactful and as usable by the masses as generative AI. This is a three-part video series on what are the actions that we can take in this moment that can allow us to grow stronger, to benefit from change and uncertainty that we see in the future. And a current event that we're all experiencing is the introduction of a technology that could completely change how we interact with society and with work. Now, I don't have the answers as to whether generative AI will completely change how we do things. My channel is about designing, and that could be designing our lives, designing systems to get us to where we want to be, designing careers, and design within our work. If we as individuals can understand how to minimize risk in certain situations, or take advantage of those risks to maximize our upside, then we're going to be in a better position to get what we want out of life. That means we need to take ownership of our own development. We need to be aware of what's happening in the broader ecosystem so we can move ourselves into spaces that we both like, that is useful, and that gives us energy. So we set ourselves up to gain from disorder. It sounds a bit harsh, but that is how we begin to be anti-fragile within society. I put a lot of my thinking through the lens of anti-fragility, which is a concept outlined in great detail within Nassim Taleb's book, Anti-Fragile. I only understand about 15 or 20% of what this book outlines on a good day. In a very brief summary, anti-fragile is the concept that you can gain or get stronger from disorder, uncertainty, chaos. This is a robust glass from Ikea. If I dropped it, it's going to bounce off the floor, but it's going to be okay. Some glasses might shatter, that's fragile. The glass that bounces is robust, but then there is something on the other end of the spectrum, which the glass is not. If I drop this glass, it's not going to gain from that chaotic event in its life. It's just going to either stay the same or it's going to break. Whereas we, as people, are anti-fragile to an extent in specific situations. Some events within our lives don't make us weaker and we don't stay the same. We gain, we get stronger from those events. The book also outlines certain asymmetries we have in society where for a certain amount of risk, you get a much higher upside. If you can go about identifying where there's a high upside for minimal downside and begin to engage in those sorts of risks, then one of those is going to hit and you will get a large amount of upside. Taking advantage of generative AI, learning how to use it and apply it in different spaces within our lives is one of these asymmetries. It could be that we're investing our time and nothing will amount from it. There might be an opportunity cost there where we could have spent our time on something more important or productive or useful for our lives. Learning how to use these things has very little downside. As a design strategist, doing research into the future needs of people, organizations, society, and how these all blend together, uh, what initiatives we can take in the now to feed into our long-term goals, I don't see a technology as impactful and as usable by the masses as generative AI. Sure, we have very interesting and exciting technology out there that is in development that could completely change how we interact with the world, such as nuclear fusion. If we had unlimited green energy, there would be so many more possibilities that would result from that. But the layman can't interact with that sort of technology unless we want to go into investing or we want to become a scientist. Whereas we can use these very user-friendly tools in our day-to-day, -day, in small bits and pieces, to save time and our mental capacity so we can engage in the lateral thinking, creative work that is the true human potential. There is very little downside if we know how to use this technology correctly, which is the topic of the next video in this series. But why? What is an example of this? Well, if I look to the world right now, in the world of business especially, you have organizations, very innovative and profitable tech startups, all the way to legacy companies going through large redundancy processes. This is usually done to optimize costs. Usually people who are caught up in these processes are the ones who organizations and the people within organizations, because it's people making these decisions, identify those people as not having the skills necessary in order to meet the organization's future needs. And that's usually bucketed in this word called competence, which includes things like mindset, characteristic, skills, ability to learn, all that sort of stuff, yada, yada, yada. Within that is also something called potential, which is its own vague term, but very often given a reason that person doesn't have the potential to do X, Y, and Z. 
The sense of betrayal in these situations usually comes in because people aren't given the opportunity to develop these sorts of skills that the organization says that it wants. Even more so because the organization usually doesn't identify that these are skills it sees as being really important and valuable for the future. So then people are kind of blindsided. We know the story from there. And so the topic of the third video is going to be around skills acquisition using generative AI. And that's both to learn generative AI and other skills that we might be interested in. And now the right time is to ask the question, why generative AI? Why do you see such a large asymmetry coming from something where mm, there isn't actually that much risk if we do invest in learning how to use these tools in our everyday lives? Well, the pace of change in generative AI is compounding more rapidly than our human brain has the capacity to process. This is a concept that I got from the All In podcast episode 124, which kind of switched the light bulb on for me. We as humans struggle to understand how compounding can actually affect us. It's why most of us wouldn't invest five or 10 minutes a day in learning a small skill like a language um, because you kind of feel like you're not getting anywhere. But over time, you actually get a much greater distance than if you invested a lot on only one or two days of the year. Inherently, we know that we want to get our interest compounded at a quicker rate when our money is sitting in a bank. It's very hard to quantify fluffier concepts or things that aren't directly measured in numbers, such as the development of a technology. The All In podcast rightly identified that generative AI is now compounding in a 24 to 72 hour cycle, which means the body of knowledge about this is increasing. And every time it increases, there is then a multiplier that is working quicker to increase the body of knowledge. So whereas technology like our beautiful phones increased on a couple of years and then a yearly basis, uh, and we get our new iPhone every single year, the thing is, because we struggle to understand this concept of such rapid compounding, we might see, oh, this thing is interesting, maybe we should learn it. If we look away and blink, the next thing we know, it's already in a completely different pace. We don't know if the thing that we dismissed today might actually be super relevant in three days time or in a month's time. And then we will miss out on the opportunity to take advantage of this high upside. The downside of this pace of change is that as people, because we can't really comprehend it, we also get a feeling of being overwhelmed while at the same time have this FOMO feeling and that we're missing out on something really important. But what do we even do when the places that we're interacting with are so slow? Organizations are slow. And even if the individual is fast to want to start to integrate certain technologies into their workflows, it's extremely difficult when the organization, A, hasn't identified that this is something that they want to start to use, and B, don't give you the tools or the necessary space within your time at work to actually begin to integrate it. As with other skills, the organization isn't yet ready to tell us what it thinks it might need, whether this thing will be valuable or whether it is just going to be completely meaningless. This level of uncertainty doesn't help us make good decisions. So we need to make a decision for ourselves. Don't be one of those people who allows frustration to bubble over because the organization that you are in, whether it's a university or a business or maybe even the organization of society, is slow to move. Wrapping up, of course, caution and skepticism is a good thing in this space. There are also many good reasons why organizations are hesitant to integrate AI tools into their workflows and their usually legacy systems. In the next video, we're going to cover some reasons we should be cautious when we use AI in the workplace and how to mitigate these risks so we can begin to leverage these tools and begin to build our advantage and also begin to develop our skills so we can take advantage of that upside to gain from the uncertainty that exists within our society.